Hello everyone, Seraphin here, welcome back for more of my Fire Emblem Heroes guide, how to play heroes that is. Today we're going to talk about the last little bit of the allies menu, because we're going to get this finished up today I think. I think it's important that we start with this because it's just the meat, like I said, it's the meat potatoes of the game is your allies and customizing them and getting them to a point where you like playing with them. So we covered edit teams, ally growth, and change equipment last time. Let's pick off, pick up where we left off with interact with allies. There's not really a whole lot to do in here, so we're, we should go pretty quick. Uh, the first things first is pair up. Now, pair up is a feature that is only available to certain heroes, certain legendary heroes, that is. Any one that has this symbol associated with them. Unfortunately, we don't have any of those right now, and there's only, I think, not even a dozen. There's maybe like six or seven, I think, in the game at all that have this feature. So, it, it's a certain legendary hero is what it says. So, we don't actually have any legendary heroes right now. So we can't actually make use of this feature at all. Uh, if I manage to summon one, which is possible, then we'll talk about that, but right now we can't. So needless to say, you starting out, if you don't have legendary heroes, then just ignore this. There's no point. Uh, ally support. This one's a little neat. So what you can do in this game is actually create uh, support bonds between your different units. And each pair of units can have a bond associated with them. So for example... I could have Anna form a relationship, not, not like a not like romantic thing, but just like a partnership, so to speak, with any other unit in my roster. So let's say her and Matthew form a support relationship. What that means is whenever they are next to each other on the map, or at least within two squares of each other, they will actually gain a, it's not a visible bonus, but they will gain a boost to their stats while on the screen and next to each other or within two squares of each other. And that is permanent as long as you don't remove the bond in favor of somebody else. And the rank, the level of the support can actually rank up. When you first create the support relationship, it starts out at C rank, meaning that whenever your two partners are together, they will gain a bonus to their resistance. Whenever that ranks up to level B, the way that you rank up the relationship, by the way, is having them fight together and defeat units together when they're next to one another. And uh, when it ranks up to B, they gain a bonus to both defense and resistance. When it ranks up to A, they gain a bonus to speed, defense, and resistance. And then finally at S rank, they gain a bonus to all their stats. So attack, speed, defense, and resistance. And it's plus two when they're together or plus one when they're one square away. And every pair of units can have a relate, can have a, or every unit rather, can have one support partner. And that is across all copies of that unit. So for example, if I were to pair up like say Takumi and Altina, every time I had a copy of Takumi and a copy of Altina on the board and they were together, they would gain that support relationship. But each unit can only have one partner at any given time. So if I were to pair up Anna with like say Ray, for example, if I wanted to change Ray's partner, I'd have to remove the one he has with Anna and start a new one with somebody else. And it would start at C rank and you have to revel it all the way back up to S rank if you wanted to have it be the maximum level. Uh, there's there's some benefit to doing that. It's not again. It's not super essential to gameplay, but it is there if you want to do that. And then there's again, it's not anything like you're not going to get anything special out of it, like you know special conversations or like paired endings or anything like that. Nothing like that. It's just purely a little extra bonus stats during gameplay. That's all it is. And apart from that, that is an ally support. By the way, we also have the summoner support. What this means is you as a character, you as the summoner actually get to form a partnership with one of your units. Only one. Uh, if you pay for the Fey Pass uh, subscription service, you can actually have up to three summoner supports, but by default you only get to have the one. And what this does is very similar to the ally support in that, like say I picked Altina for example. If I if she becomes my support, you know what, let's go ahead and do it just for kicks and giggles. So I'm going to go ahead and make Altina my support partner. And we see here a little bit, little cutscene talking about, oh yeah, we now we're we're best buddies, and now we're just gonna spend time together on the battlefield and fight together, and it's super cool. So we're now rank C summoner support with Altina, and actually her her portrait changes. You'll notice that it's actually pink around the edge now instead of gold. Whoever has a pink border around their picture is who your summoner support unit is. And actually, when we click on her little character menu here, the background's different, too. You notice it's instead of just that boring, like, gray background, that gray and white background here, it actually has changed to be, like, this beautiful, like, floral, castle-y pattern in the background. And we can see our summoner support rank with Altina's right here on her screen. We have a C rank bond with me, the summoner, 
and just from having C rank, she gets plus three bonus HP and plus two bonus resistance. And as that ranks up, the only way to rank up a summoner support is to deploy the unit and complete missions. For every stage that you clear with your summoner support unit, you'll get points toward the next rank. And I think going from from C to fully ranked S rank summoner support requires 80 maps to clear. Sounds like a lot, and it kind of is. But the nice thing is, even though you can only have one summoner support at a time, if you have an S rank with someone completed and you switch to somebody else, let's say you want to go back to that unit that you first had an S rank support with, if you already got them to S rank, it now costs you half the time to get back up to S rank with them. So instead of 80 maps, it'll only be 40. So it's a nice little benefit. You can kind of mix and match between your summoner support to give somebody a little boost. So C rank, you get HP plus 3 and res plus 2. At B rank, you get HP plus 3 and also defense and resistance plus 2. At B rank, you add speed plus 2. And then finally, at S rank, you add attack plus 2. So at an S rank summoner support, that is plus 3 to HP and plus 2 to everything else. Which it is, And again, that is not a small increase. Say, for example, that you had somebody merged to plus 10 and you also had them S rank summoner supported, that would be an additional 7 HP and an additional 6 to all their other stats. That is a very, very big difference, and it makes a huge deal. So go ahead and summoner support whoever you like, whoever you want the most, basically. And again, you can change it, but you start over at C rank, and you have to level them back up to S whenever you uh, summoner support somebody. And again, if you want more than one, you got to pay for the subscription service. I don't recommend it, but if you really, really want to, you can. So Altina is now my summoner supported unit. And I, I can change it to anybody I want at any time, pretty much. Uh, the catalog of heroes. So this is the Pokedex. That's straight up what it is. This is a list of every single hero that's in the game. And as you can see here, there are 497 heroes currently in the game. That's a lot. Uh, when the game first launched, there was, I think, 100. That was it. Now there's almost five times that much over the three years this game has been out. And we see here that the units we have we have unlocked or summoned are showing up and ones that we've newly acquired have a little exclamation mark next to them. Yes. And we can go in here, we can click on their picture and see their attack animations. We can kind of hear their voice lines a little bit. We can see their various quotes, I think. Uh, maybe, maybe only if we get into five star, I think. Uh, we can replay the video of us summoning them if we summoned them. We actually didn't summon Anna, so we don't get to see that for her. But we could, like, for example, re we could see the the uh, image of us summoning Ray if we wanted to. That's kind of neat. Let's go. And then obviously you get to see, you know, their title and all that jazz. A little description of who they are as a character. I think you, you can actually scroll through the artwork in here too if you want. Kind of neat. But it's it's the Pokedex. It's straight up what it is. It just lets you look at all the heroes you've summoned and see what they're about. And all these ones with question marks are ones that we've not yet encountered in the game yet. And if we were to encounter a unit, say, fighting with somebody else in the arena, and they had a unit that we don't have, they would appear in the catalog of heroes, but it would just be a black silhouette instead of their full artwork. And once we actually successfully acquire the hero, then they show up completely with their full artwork, their full description and everything. And actually, a silhouetted unit, you still get to see the name and the title, but you don't get to see any of this information about them. You can't see their quotes, you can't see their summoning video, that kind of jazz. So we'll get to that point somewhere so I can show you that. And actually, you can see right here in the catalog you if you've reached summoner support ranking with any of these heroes. So I have a C rank support, summoner support with Altina, so I see the little C next to her picture there. And if, say for example, you've reached summoner support with several heroes, it'll show you the maximum rank you've acquired with them in this catalog in it as well. So yeah, Pokedex, pretty nice. Uh, we have the hero merit list down here. Uh, if we had any hero merit to see, from the course of earning it through gameplay, we would see how much hero merit each hero has acquired. Right now we don't have any, but the, again, I think the maximum is 6,000. It might be 7,000 now, I'm not entirely sure. But you can come here to see your progress toward that right in here. See, they're all at zero right now. And it doesn't matter what copy of a hero earns hero merit. Like say I had four different Matthews in my teams, across all different teams, they would all earn hero merit for this one version of Matthew, basically, if that makes any sense. And then finally, we have Change Attire. Uh, this is another Fey Pass subscription exclusive thing. There's something being released with Fey Pass called Resplendent Heroes. And that basically just means upgraded versions of them with different artwork and slightly boosted stats. 
but unless you pay for the Fave Pass subscription, you don't get any of them. So you'll see, because I'm not a subscriber, I don't have any options in here, I can't get any of them. There's three currently available right now, and because I'm not a subscriber, I don't have access to any of them. So don't worry about that. Unless you're playing and paying for Fae Pass, this is useless to you. So that's all the Interact with Allies stuff. Next, we're going to skip over Edit Special Teams for right now, only because this is only important for one or two different game modes, and we'll talk about that when we get to those points. Uh, manage Barracks, this is kind of important. So... You notice that before we have 300 slots in our barracks. Now, it's possible through the course of summoning various heroes and completing maps and getting more and more people, that's going to fill up. And it's going to get to the point where it gets full and you can't summon anymore. And what do you do when that happens? Well, you have a couple of options. Uh, when the game first came out, you only had one option, and that was to send them home. And what is that? When it's like releasing a Pokemon in that sense, in that when you send home a hero, they're gone for good and you can't get them back. You can summon other copies of them, possibly, but that particular copy you just sent home will never come back. When you send a unit home, you gain a compensation of feathers, hero feathers. Um, I think a three-star hero, you get 150 feathers, uh, a four-star, you get 300, and a five-star, you get, I think, a thousand feathers. But you can't send home a hero with a favorite heart next to it. So you'll see I can't send home Altina because she's favorited. And I can't send home Anna because you can never send home Anna. You just can't. But I can send home any of these other guys. And I can select up to 10 of them in a batch to send home. And when I hit next, it'll actually show me the, all of their pictures. And like, let's just, for example, let's click on Ray here. It'll say, hey, this is the guy you're sending home. Are you sure? And you get to hit the confirm button to make sure. So you have a chance to double check and make sure you didn't put into any other you didn't want to. Sending home is the only real, is one of the... Not the best way, but if you have an overclogged barracks and you're just full and you want to get rid of people that you have extra copies of or just garbage units, you can just send them home and get some free feathers out of them. Uh, the alternative to that is you can create combat manuals. What is a combat manual? Well, you noticed how we talked about inheriting skills in the last episode, how you can use a certain hero and sacrifice them to give their skills to somebody else. Well, what combat manuals does, instead of giving you a copy of the hero, you basically turn them into a book. Yeah, I know, it sounds kind of weird. But what that means is, you turn, you no longer can use the hero in battle, but you create a manual with their, with, basically with their face on it, that has all their skills in it. And you can use those manuals to inherit skills from, instead of inheriting skills from, a, like, an actual, like, full hero. And what's also nice about that is, you can, if, like, say you have a bunch of extra copies of a unit, but you only want to use one copy that's got like a good stat spread, who's got like a, a boon and something, or an asset and something you like. You can just keep the one that you as good and you want to keep and turn all the extra crappy copies that you don't want into manuals. And that frees up space in your barracks, but you can still use those manuals to learn any skills that they had, if they had some good skills to learn, for example. Which is really nice, because you can have an unlimited number of manuals, but your barracks is very finite. So what I could do is turn Ray into a book, and then, then that book would contain all of these different skills that he has uh, inherent access to. Obviously, you can't teach anyone the preferred or personal skill because, again, only he can learn that. So everything but that would be contained in that combat manual. And again, you can have as many combat manuals as you want. There's no limit. It's very nice if you want to get rid of clutter in your barracks, but you don't want to outright get rid of the units. You want to keep them for skill inheritance purposes. You can actually also use manuals to merge units as well. And you can actually upgrade manuals into higher star versions of them, just like you could with regular heroes. But again, they don't take up space in your barracks. The only downside is, once a unit's converted into a book, you can't reconvert them into a usable hero. So make sure you're sure that you don't want to use the unit before you make it into a manual. It's not gone for good, you still have access to it for merges and for skills, but that's it. You can't actually deploy them anymore once you make them into a combat manual. But again, very, very good for decluttering your barracks and getting rid of stuff you don't need. And then if you have an abundance of manuals, like say you're me and have like 40 copies of a certain unit that's just you don't have any use for, you can actually convert your manuals into feathers just like if you sent the units home. That's what you can come here to do. And then you can also see a list of all your various combat manuals. Right now I don't have any, so there's nothing here. But that's where you go to see all this stuff is managing your barracks. And then next up we have using heroic grails. So... Oh, look at that. We get ones for free just for clicking on it. So Heroic Grails are a, a fairly uncommon resource. There's only a couple different game modes you can get these Grails from. 
But we get 200 just for entering the menu, which is kind of nice. So what can you do with Heroic Grails? Well, we see here a selection of units. And they're all four stars. And they all cost 100 Grails to start out with. These units that you're looking at right here are limited access units. These are not in the summoning pool. So if you go to summon units, you will not get any of these ones in this list right here. That is because these units on this list are only available through special events as rewards. And those kinds of rewards, so for example, uh, Zephiel here, or uh, Camus, or Xander, or the Black Knight, these are all units that are available as either Grand Hero Battles, which means you actually have to fight them, and then when you beat them, you get a free copy of them. And Grand Hero Battles uh, are a pretty big staple in the game. They're available to do all the time. There's always at least one going on. There's actually always at least three going on for the most part as a general rule. But the unit that is available from these Grand Hero Battles rotates on a, like, on a weekly basis. So you don't always have access to obtain them for free. But if you missed them, you can come in here into the Use Grails map or, uh, menu here, and you can spend your Grails that you've earned to earn copies of them if you don't already have them, or additional copies if you already do have them so you can use them for skill inheritance, or you can use them for more merges. Because because there's only a finite number of them, and you can't summon for them, the only way to get additional copies for merges is to come in here and spend your Grails to get more of them. So for example, the Black Knight is one of them. I actually have a merged plus 10 Black Knight on my main account, and I had to spend a lot of Grails to get them, because I had to come in here and spend my Grails to get them. And you may be thinking, well, you get 200 for free, and that's two free copies, right? Not quite, because every time you spend Grails to earn a hero, the cost to summon the next copy of them goes up by 50. So we see here we have 20 summons of the Black Knight left to us. If I were to uh, summon one right now with, with Grails, I would have 19 summons left, and the next copy I go to summon would cost 150 Grails instead. And that just continuously goes up every time. So ultimately, it would cost me upwards of a couple thousand Grails to get the 20th copy from here. So you can only ever get 20, but that is enough to make almost 2 plus 10 copies of Black Knight. And again, there are whenever the Grand Hero Battle or whatever rotation comes up for the given hero in here, you can earn free copies of them. I think it's up to 3. But there are some units in here that are not Grand Hero Battles, like Black Knight's actually an example. He was from an event called a Tempest Trial, which is another event that rotates around in the game. It happens monthly or so, but every time a Tempest Trial happens, it's a different new unit available. And so if you missed that Tempest Trial, like if you missed the Black Knight one, because obviously you did, if you're just now playing, you can come in here to get more copies of him if you missed him. Uh, same with every unit on this list. Every unit in this list is a limited time unit that is only accessible via special events. They are not able to be summoned for. You can only get them from here, or if the event that gave them away is rerun at some point. They do do periodic reruns of previous events, so it is possible they'll pop up again for free without having to spend grails, but it's uh, generally few and far between. So if you're hoping for a specific one, like the Death Knight here from Three Houses, you're probably going to be waiting a little while. But if you want one now, come here, grab some, or spend some grails, and get a free copy now. And again, these grails are earned in-game currency. There, you can't earn, you can't buy these real money, so you're not like tempted to get ten copies of Black Knight or ten copies of Clive or something like that. But there's a there's a pretty sizable list in here, and usually a couple of weeks after any of these are given away, they will update this roster with the new ones that just came out. So if you're waiting for someone to show up on this list, just wait a little bit; they'll pop up in here eventually. And then finally, we're going to go down to Compile. This is a brand new feature that was just added to the game. Uh, we get these items called Divine Codes. And these Divine Codes all have a part associated with them. So these are Part 1 Divine Codes. And we're getting 1,500 of them, which is cool. And there's two different kinds of codes. We have Normal, which is what the ones are for. And what these Divine Codes are for is you can spend them you see we have 1,550 for some reason. Oh, because we got a daily reward of 50 of them. We can spend these to create a combat manual of a unit. Now, this does not give you the full unit like to use in battle. You just get the manual for them. So you get their skills. You can inherit other people, and you can also use them to merge if you already have a copy of this real unit. So, for example, if we scroll down a little bit here, uh, let's see... Let's just use let's just use one. So this is Cordelia from Awakening, but this is her summer version. 
that came out, I think, in, like, last July. But this is just a combat manual of her. So we see all of her skills. We've got the Shell Lance, Harsh Command, Sturdy Blow, and Dull Close. If we had a version, if we had a copy of this Cordelia already, we could merge the manual into her to make her a plus one. Or we can just inherit any of these skills to somebody if we wanted to. That's what the manuals are for. And we can come in here, and even if we don't have a copy of the unit already, we can use these codes to compile a manual for her. And you'll see here there's a few different paths. So we have Awakening and Fates, which is Summer Cordelia, and then uh, looks like Evil Robin, and Owain from Awakening, and Summer Xander. It's actually a Dancing Xander, which is hilarious. And then we have a Drift Corrin here. There's five different heroes in a given path. And in order to progress further down the path, you need to get the ones that are first. So if we wanted to get this Evil Robin, we first have to get Summer Cordelia, and then we can get Evil Robin, and then we can get Owain, and then we can get Xander. So overall, we'd need, looks like, doing the math here real quick, we need 6,000 of these Divine Codes to get all five in this given path. And there appears to be six different paths. So if you're looking for a particular set of skills from any of these units, or you just want merges, you got to use these codes and rank up the various trees to get to what you want. And there looks like I said, there looks like six different paths in here. So we got one for Awakening and Fates, one for Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, one for Blazing Sword and uh, and Binding Blade and Sacred Stones, one for Genealogy of the Holy War, one for Mystery of the Emblem and Shadow Dragon, and one for just Heroes original characters. And some of these are really good. Like, uh, for example, it, it would be I would really like to have a copy of uh, Valentine's Day Grail here, who is Ike's father, because he's got some beastly good skills on him. We'll talk about him some other time. But anyway, this is what you use the Divine Codes for, is when you go to compile, you can compile them and make manuals for them. And in fact, you know what we're going to do, just for kicks and grins, let's go ahead and compile one. We're going to compile a manual for... Uh, do I want Lilina? No, we'll do it some other time. Sorry about that. I'll figure out what I want and we'll come back. There's also, in addition to those normal ones which you always have access to, there is these limited time ones. When we use the Divine Codes labeled number 3, for these ones, these are limited time access. There, You see there's 42 days left to use our th Divine Codes labeled number 3. I think they're called Ephemera or something. But we have 42 days left to come in here and get combat manuals of any of these units. And you can see they're a bit cheaper. And the nice thing about these is there's no, like, progression tree. We can grab any one of these that we want, as long as we have the number of codes that we need to get. So this is Springtime Kagero in a bunny outfit. She costs 300 uh, th number three ephemera codes to get. Right now we don't have any. Uh, Springtime Camilla in a bunny outfit costs 300. Uh, Barst and Shauna and Sylvia and Oscar and Soleil, they all cost 100. We can come in here, and I think you can get as many copies of these as you want. Which is also nice, because those other normal ones, you only get one apiece. But these, I think you can get as many as you want. So, if you need Barst for reposition fodder, because everybody does, he's 100 codes apiece. Or if you need Shauna for uh, Desperation 3 fodder, which is very common, or Iceberg, then she's going to cost you 100 of these ephemera. Like I said, right now we don't have any, but there are ways to earn them through the course of gameplay. There is one gameplay event in particular that awards Divine Codes, and we'll talk about that when it's actually available, because right now it's not. That's alright. And that's all there is for compiling. The only thing we skipped over, again, was editing special teams. I'll touch on it a little bit briefly. Uh, reserve teams. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't actually know a whole heck of a lot about reserve teams. Oh, okay. So there's certain gameplay modes that are multiple maps in succession and don't let you take a break in between. Reserve teams are what you would use to create, like, you know, backup teams for when... Because in multi-map battles, you actually can't use the same team for all of them. you got to pick different ones every time. At least in the case of something like Squad Assault. This is where you go to make all your backup teams. It's, you're probably not going to use this very much. There's also another thing in here for uh, editing brigades, I think. Which, strangely enough, I don't see in here. And that's kind of odd, but... At any rate, we'll talk about that some other time. But that's pretty much it for the Heroes menu, or the Allies menu, rather. We've covered just about everything in here. Um, if I missed anything, or do you have some further questions about something, feel free to leave me a comment, and I will try to answer you as best I can. I want to make sure that I get everybody as, you know, squared away and clear as possible, so you're not super duper confused when you come in here, like, what in the world do I do with all this stuff? So let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And stay tuned for next time, where we actually go and do some summoning. 
so we can see what that's like. That'll be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. We'll do it next time. And until then, this has been Seraphin. Stay classy, internets.